Okay, so today we're going to take a closer look at the edit modes and the pattern modes of Scalar. So let's start by bringing a fresh Scalar plugin into a MIDI track. So I've made other videos, so if you want to know sort of the basics of how you select chords from scales and songs, please click on that to know more. So there's a bit of assumed knowledge here for the beginning of this tutorial. I'm going to show you the edit mode and the pad or pattern modes of Scalar today in a little bit more detail than I've normally done. And as you can tell here, as you, if you just click any of these one, two, three, four, five buttons here, you will be able to select any of these kind of modes. Let's start by selecting a chord. I'm gonna select a genre chord, just select a simple 80s chord there. Okay, so we've got some lovely chords there. And we can just sort of change the sound. I'm not really a fan of that sound for 80s chords, but we can just select electric piano, which sounds more 80s, don't you think? Let's select the first four chords and move them into pattern one. Now, just something I wanted to say very quickly, and I've said this in the previous video, the chord here, so the detected scale is showing us G flat major scale. There's like a blue bar showing at the top. It just means that every single note is in G flat major. So if you see a dark gray color, which this one is, it means some of the notes are not. And that's really that sort of tension thing, it adds a bit of tension. So you don't want all of your chords to be in blue, basically. You do want some to be a little bit different. So anyway, that's just a bit of background. So once we've selected the chords we want, and we've dragged them here, clearly I've done this bind to this section, the pattern section bind. All that does is it connects my MIDI to those chords. So for example, if I play C on my keyboard, it will play the rest, and then D will play the first, second note, third chord, and once you're in pattern mode, you can do a few things. First, let's expand pattern mode by clicking edit. So we've got pattern mode here. So first thing you can do is you can duplicate pattern mode by right clicking duplicate. And it just copies all of the chords from pattern one into pattern two. If you just double click it, you could rename it. So we can call it um, something else, but we'll call it pattern two X or something like that. When you're songwriting, these different versions or variations of your chords might come in handy. So it's good to have a background. And if you change anything, you've always got a copy of it as well. Now, the other thing I wanted to show that is if you go into this playback section, so this is talking really about playing back these chords. I've selected a chord duration of two beats, but I think by default, Scalar has four beats. If you listen to them at four beats, it's just passing through a bit slowly. So I've selected two because I think that's, for me, that works better. So it's not too fast, but it's not too slow. So you've got the kind of the right timing. You've got all these other options about, you know, the default settings for playback groups. And you can have a door sync default, but I'm not going to do that. So there's, there's quite a few other things you could do there. But for me, the most important thing was that chord duration. If you right click on the um, play button, it'll sync to door. So all you have to do in Ableton, I don't, I'm not sure about other doors, but in Ableton, if you press space, it'll just play the chords. And if you press space, it will stop chords, which for me is really handy. But if you just right click on it again, if you play through the chords, it'll stop at the last chord. Actually, it will play all the rests, but it will stop at the end of that pattern. So if you want to repeat by the end of the chord to get back here, let's firstly delete all of these rests. All I've done is selected them and press the delete button um, and then just play. It'll just loop back to the first chord. And I've switched it off and it's it's done, it's finished. When you're in edit mode, you've got these three options, chord voicings, playback timings, and playback performances. So in version, if you click on one, what that's gonna do is it's gonna play the chord, but it's also gonna play the D flat note in the chord. As you can see, it's still in blue, right? So it's still playing a note in the chord. And if you keep clicking on it, If you keep clicking on it, you can see, you can actually see in blue the notes that have been played. Now, what I tend to do is if the chord is like really high in frequency, I might put a lower inverted note in. So that D flat is playing lower than the rest of the chord. And that does sound better. Now, if I'm not sure about that chord, say I want to test different chords, you can go up and down a semitone. 
Let's just bring that inversion back to zero. And you'll see as you go through all of the different variations of that chord. So it goes from A flat minor major to A major to B flat. You'll see the chords that are in key, right? And when I say in key, if we just go on the main, it's in key with G flat major scale, because that's the one we've selected as the detected chord that we want to follow. So you can see this one's in gray, so it's not gonna be in key. So when you play it with the rest of the chords, it's gonna sound a bit off. But sometimes it works, you know? So for example, we could select this B flat major key, and this one will work better because it's light gray, which means some of the notes are in the scale and some are not. But as you keep going up a semitone, it gets a bit sort of high, so you may want to reduce an octave. And then you go back to B, C flat major. Now I can't remember what that first chord is, but luckily I copied the pattern and I know it's G flat major. So we're just gonna bring it down to G flat major there and maybe increase the octave a bit and reduce the inversion. Same here. And maybe we just wanna reduce the octave for that. So that's chord voicing, it's pretty handy. And let's just hear what it sounds like now that we've made all those changes. repeat. So one thing I didn't say is the settings correspond to what's on top of it. No, correspond to the chord on top of it. So let's just go to playback timings and it's the same concept. We just open that up. We've got two options here. We've got repeating the chord and duration of the chord. So duration of the chord is, you know, basically the duration. So if you want to play a bit faster, you go down to half. You want to play it slower, you can go up. So let's just start with half here. So you can see it moved pretty quickly from the first chord to the second chord. Let's just move this, this one down to a, a third. A half. Now because it's a half, you could maybe repeat the first one and repeat the third one. And you could bring it down to a third, but then we might want to triplify it. So just for the purposes of you know, keeping things simple, I'm just gonna bring them back to one and we're gonna not repeat them. We're just gonna bring it back to its default. So playback timings is a fairly simple concept and hopefully that makes sense. And in terms of playback performances, it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's actually not that uh, difficult. So for example, we will enable, well, by default it's global. Um, you can select a group. Everything that's in G flat major with that D flat note in it will play what's in this group. And the rest of them will play the defaults, which are global. So what I mean by that is you can select all of these lovely options. So for example, let's select arpeggio and we'll just you know use the defaults. So we just press play. So the rest of them are global default. And that might be something that you like. We can change the default to timing. And obviously with arpeggio, you can change all of the different types of arpeggio options. Sixteenth is faster. And you've got different note lengths. Let's go full. And you can... You can even change the octave range so it goes up and down three octaves here. We can now select uh, all these other different options like strumming. And sometimes strumming, you know, that sounds really good. Now, if I just want strumming on the first chord and the third chords, I just select group one and that will just apply what the settings of group one are in the third chords. So if we want different types of strumming, so for example, we can create another group here and we'll just select strumming, but we can, for example, make it kind of slower strumming and we could do kind of random settings and we can make the fourth one the same, you know, that could be a slower strumming. So let's listen to that. So 
So once you're happy with your performances, your timings and all of that stuff, just simply drag that MIDI into a MIDI track like that. And if we just inspect it just quickly, you can see that strumming is there. And obviously you can go ahead and change how that works and you know you can be super precise with it. So, you know, that's pretty fast and a pretty decent little option that you have. Let's go into a few more complex types of performances. So for example, we can select performance or phrases. So performances will just play all the notes in the chord. So let's just select that and you have all these different patterns to select. So we'll just select a basic eight. And remember, because the third chord is on group one, it's going to play that. And we'll just select another performance here and we'll select basic performance or common performance one. So let's listen to that. In this situation, you may want to increase the chord length to four beats because it's more complex, right? So let's listen now. And once again, once you've done all of that, you can just simply drag that MIDI and there you've got a four thing beat. Yeah, it's just done basically. Let's just now select something called phrases. Now the difference between phrases and performances, performances will play the notes that are in your, uh, the chord that you've selected, but phrases will play those notes, but maybe go outside a little bit, go outside the box. So it's, it's gonna be more complex sounding and maybe even more interesting. So let's select phrases with that and we have to select we'll select basic eight and phrases here again we'll select another basic one or a common chord chordal one and when remember group one and group two we'll repeat what's in those and let's listen Okay, so you can immediately, even though you've only selected a basic phrase, it's more complicated, more complex. And then you've got all these other immense options. And one of the new things that come with version 2.7 is Avant Garde. Now Avant Garde is even more complex. So let's just select one of these just randomly for each one. And it will sound more beautiful. In my, ear, in my ears, it's like kind of like more beautiful sounding. Then you've got the button here, which you're basically linking your keyboard to these chords. Now, because you've already selected these different playback performances, when you play your keyboard, it'll play those back. Let's just reduce that resolution again. So I'm just playing. So this is a good thing if you want a certain type of timing, right? Okay, so you've got that ability to perform based on all of those settings. Now, I finally wanted to go through this pad section, which is just an extension really of that pattern that we talked about before. So if you remember the original section, we did a copy of pattern one into pattern two. So we didn't really lose anything there, but we did a lot more work on pattern one. So you can just take all of those by pressing Alt, you can just copy them across. And now you've automatically created pattern free, which you can obviously change the name, duplicate, clear. You can do all sorts of stuff. If we select any one of these chords. Let's select this one here. We can add this chord to the current pattern. So the current pattern is the one that is highlighted there. So we just add it there to the end. And we could, for example, let's just select this one here we can add this to a new pattern. So we just create a new pattern. We can add that to a specific pattern. So we can, for example, add it to pattern two. So we'll add it right, right at the end there. You can replace the current pattern, which you know, as I said, the, the selected current pattern is there, but we're not going to do that. So we just click Control Z to undo all of that. And you can do something like extract voicing, and then you can apply voicing to a different chord. So for example, with this one here, we can just extract the voicing there and just put that onto this chord here. And also you can copy the playback performance and apply that to a different chord, paste the playback performance.
So once you've selected the pattern that you like, then you can then go ahead and select drag and bring that into MIDI instruments and listen to it. And so that is pretty much it for pad, edit and main. So I'm hoping that helped. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will do my best to help.